Kim Tugs och Samba. Bild i Turbine. This is a Tesla turbine, and as the obvious name indicates, it's a turbine that was invented by Tesla. No, the real Tesla. I said the real Tesla. Perfection. Tesla registered the patent for this device in 1930 as being a radial bladeless turbine to be used in the conversion of pressurized steam to electricity. According to Tesla, this turbine was able to reach rotary efficiencies of 95%, which at the time was really amazing because conventional turbines were only able to reach 20 to 40 percent. The Tesla turbine uses an unconventional way of getting energy out of fluids that involves the boundary layer effect, an effect on which I'll be making a video next week. Or I already made it, and you're seeing this on the future. In that case you probably can find the link in the description. I've been in love with the Tesla turbine for quite a while now, so I decided to make one. My first idea was to make a completely 3D printed version. So I started off by 3D modeling a simple design constituted by four parts. The lid, the casing, the rotor and the ball bearings. Because I wanted the rotor to run as smoothly as possible, I tried to find a good design for 3D printable ball bearings. Instead, I found 3D printable roll bearings, designed by Thingiverse user Rebro12. The design is pretty smart and the OP even made a video demonstrating how smoothly the roll bearing runs using a Dremel. Dude, if for some reason that bearing jammed, all that kinetic energy would be immediately transferred to his fingers. And then... The original design had a 12mm diameter hole, which I thought was too big. So I used Mesh Mixer to uniformly scale the whole thing to 50% its original size. Mesh Mixer is a free 3D modeling software that is really versatile and a must if you 3D print anything. Also, it's free, so if you want to check it out, I'll put the download link in the description. In the next step, I sliced the model using Simplify 3D and I sent it to the printer. The result was... shit. In the first layer, the rings completely merged with the rollers. As a fix, I increased the first layer height and gave it a go. And that actually didn't work. The result was the same. My next genius idea was to scale down the rollers to increase the distance between said rollers and the rings, and that didn't work either. After really improving my aim to get my failed attempt into the trash bag, I rage quitted and decided to use pre-made, pre-assembled 8mm ball bearings that can't disappoint me or hurt my feelings. Ball bearings, they won't hurt you. My next enterprise was to try and print the shaft and all the discs in one piece, to avoid individually printing a bunch of small discs that I would have to manually assemble afterwards. And let's be honest. What can possibly go wrong in a print as simple as a long cylinder with other smaller cylinders across? Everything. Everything went to shit. The resolution was inadequate, there was a lack of support material, warping, stringing and my favorite, layer separation. The final result was completely useless and pure rubbish. And since we are talking about rubbish, this gives me the perfect segue to introduce you to this video's sponsor. Trash bags. Trash, bags. Trash, bags. Trash, bags. Trash bags are the polyethylene wonder that will help you shamelessly hide your failures. Trash bags. Trash bags. Buy one bag and we'll offer you 48. Trash bags. Trash bags. Use the Intex code and automatically get a 20% discount. Trash bags. Trash bags. At this point in time I failed to print two parts for a four parts project. My self esteem was basically leaking the floor, so I decided to change the design and print the discs one by one to manually assemble them later. From the 21 discs I first printed, about half were complete garbage. Which means only half a failure, I guess? Yay! After changing the printing settings, I tried again. The second batch came out perfect, with a good aspect and precise dimensions. Because I was feeling good, I tried to print the casing and the lid in one sitting, which inevitably backfired. So more design changes and I end up printing a new lid in the originally planned blue and the casing in yellow for beautifulness purposes. Additionally, I printed two more parts. One part is a red flywheel to mount on the exterior and have a rough visual estimate of the speed of the turbine, and the other part that's really, really important 
is the subscribe part. It's like majorly important. So don't forget the subscribe part. Yep. Once I had all the necessary parts printed in PLA, I started assembling everything. As a shaft, I used a 8mm threaded rod. And to tighten everything together, I used corresponding 8mm nut. I started off by inserting the ball bearings in both the lid and the casing. And then all the discs on the shaft, tightening everything with nuts in the end. On the next step, I threaded the pre-existing holes on the casing, so I could later fix the lid using 3 M3 screws with 2 cm of length. This is what the turbine should look like on the inside. To print the parts I used premium PLA and two different printers, the widely known Creality CR10 and the less known but also great Modix Big 60. But you can virtually use any FDM printer to print these parts. So all that remains is to test the turbine. Unfortunately, I don't own a tachometer, so I wasn't able to get a reading on the exact speed. Nonetheless, according to the flywheel movement and the accelerating noise, I think the turbine behaved decently. As you can imagine, this specific turbine has many efficiency issues, but I think it's an affordable and easy way of getting a working physical model of the Tesla turbine. Also, in the future, I would like to make a better version of this turbine. So if you guys have any idea on how to build a high efficiency Tesla turbine, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, with that said, this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video enough to stick around and until the next time, bye bye.